President, I'd ask unanimous consent that the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. Madam President, over the last few weeks, given the nature of this unprecedented virus, members of Congress have been able to come together and during divided times to support our country, our country's response. First, we passed an emergency funding bill to bolster our response in the critical early stages of community spread. Since it was signed into law nearly two weeks ago, it's provided funding for the personal protective equipment our healthcare professionals rely on, supported our community health centers and state and local health departments. It's also bolstered our resources in the race to develop a vaccine, possible treatments, more tests. It was a strong start, but we've known all along that it would just be the first step. As the scope of this virus continues to grow and challenge our country in new ways, we're working as quickly as possible to respond in real time. As we know, more and more Americans are staying home and practicing a new term, a new phrase, social distancing, one that I really hadn't heard of before this virus. And while that's a sign of progress in our fight to slow the spread of the coronavirus that's handicapping millions of businesses and workers, as travel plans are abandoned, public events are canceled, and restaurants and shops are closing their doors or scaling back their operation, many people are losing their jobs and their livelihood. A recent poll found that nearly one in five American households have experienced a layoff or reduced work hours. And those who work in the service or hospitality industry are particularly hard hit. Think about the waiter at your favorite local restaurant, the person who cuts your hair, the individual who sweeps the aisles after a basketball game, the housekeeper who cleans rooms at a hotel, they are among the millions of workers across the country who are trying to survive this new reality. Here in the Senate, we're working as quickly as possible to support them. Yesterday, we passed a bill to help individuals and families facing economic fallout from this outbreak. We improved paid sick leave for those impacted by the coronavirus and strengthened our food security for Americans of all ages. We also made corona virus testing free for all Americans. No one should be afraid to get tested because of the cost. For all the benefits that this legislation will deliver, it doesn't address every problem. We knew that. We knew that it would just be the second step in, an underterm in a journey of undetermined length. But rather than holding that bill up and doing nothing to include additional measures we'd like to see, we worked as quickly as possible put that second phase into action and move on to phase three. Building on the first two steps that we've taken, it's time to make bold moves to support our economy. We need to be sure it can survive this pandemic in the short term and thrive in the long term. The American people are resilient. We've been through national disasters like 9-11, the huge economic meltdown and Great Recession of 2008. But in my experience, we've never had anything quite like the coronavirus pandemic. But the American people have always maintained their good attitude and uh, worked through these crises and come out stronger and better on the end. As I mentioned, the shift in our daily routines is having a serious impact on the businesses we're used to supporting every day in our local communities. And sadly, those small businesses, which employ about half of all U.S. workers, are among the hardest hit. And here's the thing. They bear no responsibility for the economic condition they find themselves in. This is something totally beyond their control. The restaurants, the hardware stores, the salons, the gyms, and countless other small businesses operated by our neighbors are facing tough decisions. Over the last couple of days, I've talked about a number of my constituents, fellow Texans who are experiencing hardship, one whose revenue is down in about 60 percent, 
one who's rotating her employees so each can at least get some work, one who's terrified that this could sink the business he's worked on for 25 years. As we continue working on this third phase of the corona response, coronavirus response and recovery, my top priority is to support these small business owners and their employees who've been left with no way to collect a paycheck, no way to provide for their family, no way to provide for the necessities of life. Yesterday, Senate Republicans met with Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and discussed the wide-ranging proposals to provide relief to workers and small businesses. One thing we all agreed on, we need to take immediate action to put money directly into the hands of these displaced workers. Work opportunities may be disappearing for some workers, but the expenses don't go away. People need money to buy groceries, pay their bills, stay afloat, until things normalize. There are ongoing discussions about the most efficient and most effective way to get money into the hands of those most negatively impacted, but I wanted to assure all Texans that we are working as quickly as possible to find the best solution. The centerpiece of the phase three deal will be, will be that direct aid to American workers who have been displaced but it must also include additional actions to protect the integrity of our healthcare system. As more and more people are being tested and diagnosed, our hospitals and healthcare providers need additional support so they can continue to serve patients. We're working to get our healthcare providers the resources and equipment they need to continue fighting this virus on the front lines. I want to thank the Majority Leader, Senator McConnell, for publicly committing to keep the Senate here in session until we pass legislation that meets these high demands, a decision that I fully support. While the Senate's work continues, I know many Americans are feeling some helplessness and uncertainty at a time when the best thing you can do may be just to stay home. While older Americans face a higher risk if they come into contact with the virus, every one of us has a role that we can play in beating this virus. I want to reiterate remarks made earlier this week by Dr. Deborah Burks, who's coordinating the White House Coronavirus Task Force. She continues to stress the importance of millennials, one of the largest generation cohorts, saying that this is the core group who will stop this virus. Because we all know young people feel bulletproof, and that they, their life will be eternal, many of the times they don't understand that they're just as mortal as the rest of us. Because these younger individuals are at lower risk from the virus, they think it's fine to continue with their normal routines as long as they aren't experiencing symptoms. But if they're infected, they can still transmit the virus to others, especially the older, more vulnerable people in their community. Dr. Burks pointed out that we often talk about the greatest generation. That's the World War II generation. People like my mom and dad. Those who answered the call to serve and fought for our freedoms. But now is the time for the younger generation, the millennials, to answer a different call and take the necessary precautions to protect that greatest generation, which is among the most vulnerable. I'm proud of the fact that when, uh, when Texas faces a crisis, whether it's hurricanes or tornadoes that have devastated our state in recent years, Texans come together and support one another. But the truth is that's also how I would describe how Americans react to an attack, whether it's 9-11, the Great Recession of 2008, or now this coronavirus. This is not a time for us to engage in business as usual. This is time for us to come together in a new and very important but different way. Stay home, take this seriously, and we'll get through this together. Mr. President, I yield the floor, and I would note the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander.